Halloween is usually a very exciting time of year. We dress up in costumes, we indulge in lots of treats and thrills, and it's a spooky time of year to watch really good horror movies, and it's usually a time that's fun for everyone. But there's also a very dark side to Halloween. Crime in the United States goes up 50% on Halloween night. In this case, an extremely evil man tried to use Halloween as an excuse to commit an absolutely heinous crime. The horror of Halloween was so intense for the Daresaw family that they will never forget the evil that was done. beautiful souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolyn and this channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. So let's dive right into today's story. On Halloween in 2008, downtown Sumter, South Carolina was buzzing with excitement. There was a huge block party where there were tons of games for kids to play and entertainment for adults as well, and loads of candy for everyone. 12-year-old TJ had been anticipating this day for quite a while. He was so excited that it was finally Halloween. He was so excited about the costume that he had picked out. He was having a wonderful time at this block party and the night was just going amazing as expected. Tony Jamal Darisal, Tony Jamal Darisal, who went by TJ, was born December 7th, 1995 in South Carolina. He was being raised by his mother and his stepfather, who were Daphne and Freddie Grinnell. TJ definitely had a sweet tooth, and he loved helping his mother in the kitchen when she would cook cakes and cookies and pies and all of those types of things. His favorite part was getting to lick the batter at the end. He was a very responsible boy. Unlike a lot of kids his age, he loved helping his parents around the house and would ask them often if there were chores that needed to be done that he could help out with. When it came to school, TJ was in the seventh grade. He did well in school and he was considered a very well-rounded student. He was on the drill team and he absolutely loved it. He loved being able to strut his stuff and show off his cool moves. Math and board games were his favorite activities. He was fascinated by numbers. So he really enjoyed playing games with his brother and he always liked to play games where he could use his brain. Overall, he was an absolutely amazing, intelligent, sweet young boy. On October 31st, 2008, TJ and his brother did not want Halloween to end. They asked their parents if they could visit a few more houses to do a little bit more trick-or-treating. Of course, their parents agreed. Halloween is a night for spooky adventures after all. After enjoying the block party, the family decided that they would end off the evening doing a little bit of trick-or-treating. Unfortunately, this would be an absolutely horrific, fatal decision. And what ended up happening could never even have been imagined. They all hopped back in the car and they drove about three miles to a quiet neighborhood. Driving slowly down a dim lit road, they saw a house with a porch light on. And for trick or treaters, the porch light on is a sign that they've got candy. And I want you to remember this part because it's extremely important to the story. Not only was the porch light on, but there was a sign on the porch saying this house has treats. In my opinion, I feel like this sign was a trap, but let me tell you the rest of the story and I really wanna know your opinion, especially when it comes to the sign and the excuse for the crime that is committed. 
Everything seemed fine when the family pulled over and parked in front of the cozy one-story house. There was a Dodge Charger in the carport and another vehicle in the yard. So TJ, who is the 12-year-old boy, his brother, another relative, and the stepfather all get out of the car and they're going to go up to the house to trick or treat. The mom decided to just wait in the car for them. The group approached the house where 22-year-old Quentin Patrick lived. Quentin was no stranger to trouble. He had a criminal record for things like drug possessions, assault, and he was a member of a local, I'm not allowed to say the word on YouTube, it starts with a G. They all get together in a group and they usually have an opposing group that they don't get along with. Sorry, I know it's silly when I can't say such simple words, but unfortunately, Daddy YouTube, he just won't let me. So this is going to be Quentin's story. And as I had mentioned just a few minutes ago, this is a man who has his porch light on, which I don't know that there's necessarily a huge importance of the porch light being on. I know myself when on Halloween, if I've ever run out of candy, I turn off all the lights so the kids know, okay, there's no candy at this house. The porch light aside, he had a sign on his porch that said, this house has treats. And it's my belief, this is just my opinion, I believe the sign was placed there to lure someone to the door. But let me tell you Quentin's side of the story. Quentin claimed that he had no intention of celebrating Halloween that evening at all. He claimed he just wanted a quiet night at home with his 19 year old girlfriend, Erica P and their two young children. He's claiming that he has no intention of giving out candy to trick-or-treaters, yet he has a sign on his porch saying he's got candy to give out. So I don't know how he thought this would make any sense, but this is his story. With his mask on and his candy bucket ready, TJ was the first to go up the three steps onto the porch. He was determined to be the first one to get the candy. So he led the group up towards the house. Excitement filled the air as all of the kids in unison said, trick or treat. Now back to the fake story. We're going back to Quentin and his lame BS that he's trying to say in this case. So Quentin and his girlfriend are in the house. They hear the knock on the door and the girlfriend goes to the door. She looks through a window, sees a kid wearing a mask and screams. Now, I'm not sure what she's afraid of because it's Halloween and you have a sign saying we have treats here. So you should fully be expecting children in costumes wearing masks to come to your door. Like, it seems pretty simple to me, but let me know what you think. So obviously, Quentin responds completely reasonably to this by grabbing an AK-47. You have children trick-or-treating. You know it's Halloween. You know you have a sign saying you have treats. You have your porch light on. But yeah, your girlfriend sees a mask and screams. So your natural response is to grab an AK-47? Like, ugh, this story makes me so angry. In the next moment, this sick piece of shit shot 22 bullets within a matter of seconds. Many of the bullets hit TJ, 12 years old, because he was standing closest to the door because he was so excited wanting to get the candy first. So he received most of the shots. He was shot in the head and killed instantly at the scene. TJ's younger brother and his stepfather were both hit with a few bullets each, but the areas that they were shot in, both of them did survive. 
After the shooting stopped, TJ's lifeless body fell off the porch and landed on the ground in a pool of his own blood. TJ's father, Freddie, grabbed his lifeless body and held on to him, just hoping that he would survive. He didn't know that TJ had already passed. And while this is going on, Quentin is in the house planning his great escape. Before the paramedics had even arrived at the scene, Quentin, his girlfriend Erica, and their two young children fled the scene in his Dodge Charger. Detective Ridgway, who was a six-year veteran of the department assigned to violent crimes, was sent out to the house on Wise Drive. TJ's mother, unconsolable, was bent over his body, crying uncontrollably. Within seconds, another twist, because Quentin decides to come back to the scene. He comes back to the scene and tells the officer that he thought that he was being robbed. He thought he was being robbed by a 12-year-old boy who is trick-or-treating on Halloween. When you have a sign in your yard telling kids that you have treats. Like, <sighs> Quentin Patrick was immediately arrested at the scene. TJ's stepfather and his younger brother, they were both taken to the hospital to treat their injuries. And both the younger brother and the stepfather, they both survived. But there was no need to rush TJ to a hospital because there wasn't anything anyone could do. Within seconds of being shot in the head, he died immediately. Quentin was brought into the police department for questioning and a team of investigators arrived at the house to look for any potential evidence and process the crime scene. Quentin's girlfriend, who did not come back to the scene with Quentin, she was found at a neighbor's house and she was brought into the police station for questioning. When Quentin was being interrogated by police, he told them that he had drug charges in the past, assault charges, that, you know, he had a long list of crimes that he had committed. Majority of them were substance related. He was associated with a G, A N G, and they were very well known for trafficking substances. Quinton mentioned in the questioning, which is what his defense was, is that he had been robbed and shot at before, so he was extremely paranoid about somebody robbing his house. So I just want to ask you, I know a couple people who have had their house broken into and some people do respond to that and they do become very paranoid that it would happen again. But if you are paranoid about someone breaking into your house, on Halloween, when people are dressed up, you know that there's more crimes committed than normal. Would you leave your porch light on and put out a sign saying that you have candy to encourage children to come and knock at your door? All he had to do if he didn't want Halloween was to turn off his lights. Kids probably wouldn't even have come up to his door. It's just, this is like, this is his literal defense is he thought this 12 year old boy was there to rob him. No, he was there to trick or treat because you lured him with a sign saying you had candy. Sorry, I know I'm getting really riled up. This case, it, it really, really angered me a lot because it's just so stupid and pointless and this young boy he was only 12 years old he had his whole life ahead of him and you know when anyone dies you always hear oh he was this amazing person or she was you know lit up a room but this kid really seemed like 
He was a good kid. He was really close to his family. He was good at school. He was kind to all other children. Like he was a nice, very intelligent boy who was gonna grow up and probably have an absolutely amazing life. And we have no idea how many lives this boy could have affected if this psychopath didn't take an AK-47 and shoot someone trick-or-treating. There were also records that Quinton had been charged with evading police in the past. And he also had a lot of other charges relating to substances, assaults, but all of these crimes were committed before he was 18. They didn't stop when he turned 18. But the, the, the crimes I'm talking about right now are the crimes he committed before he was 18. So he was put into this like young offenders program. So when he turned 18, his record was completely expunged. He had a clean record. Quentin further claimed that he did not believe that it was a 12 year old boy at the door. He believed that it was an adult who was there to try to rob him. Quentin faced one charge of murder, three counts of assault and battery with the intent to kill. He also had other charges against him that had not, he had not gone through the courts yet, but he had charges for a lot to do with substances and selling them was his the main thing that he had a lot of charges. He also had some assaults as well that he was charged with. He also had gun charges as well. His girlfriend Erica initially was charged with obstruction of justice for trying to leave the scene of a crime, remove evidence from the scene of a crime. But I think that the charges, this is just, speculation, but all I could find was that she was charged with this, but there was never anything saying she was either convicted or the charges were dropped. So I'm assuming in this case, they probably dropped the charges because she probably uh, was involved somehow in helping them convict Quentin, but that's just my speculation. As to what happened with her charges, I don't know, but she never was sentenced for anything for those charges. In 2013, Quentin Patrick pled guilty to the murder of TJ Derrysaw. TJ's parents expressed that they wanted Quentin to be locked behind bars for the rest of his life. They believed that he should live every day in jail, feeling the weight of what he had done. Quentin received 30 years in prison for the murder. Additionally, he was sentenced to 16 years in gun-related charges. TJ was laid to rest in Evergreen Memorial Cemetery, which is just across the street from where the senseless murder of this sweet, innocent 12-year-old boy occurred. TJ's stepdad just, he seemed like such an amazing man. He says that TJ protected his family that day and TJ saved the lives of Freddie and the younger brother. So as a family, they look at TJ as a hero. And I have to say that's just beautiful because it's just so senseless. However, Freddie still finds the memories of that night absolutely horrifying. He says that he goes over and over those last few minutes of TJ's life again and again, trying to see if there was something that could have been different, but there's absolutely no way that he could have known that a lunatic with an AK-47 was on the other side of that door. The family does find solace in the fact that they believe TJ received justice with the sentence that Quentin was given. So it's really wonderful in cases when family members are happy with the outcome. I Obviously, it, it can't change what happened. It can't bring that person back. But the least that we can do as a society is to give these families at least justice. And I feel weird even saying justice because I don't consider it justice. 
there's nothing that can justify a 12 year old boy being senselessly murdered for absolutely no reason. But at least the family is satisfied with the outcome of the trial. Halloween night in 2008 was supposed to be a really fun, exciting night for the whole family. And it's so terrible the way it turned out. TJ's family was left shattered, forever haunted by the terrifying events that happened that night that led to them losing the absolutely amazing TJ. So that's the end of today's story. I would love to know in the comment section below what you think of this story, if you have heard of it. Also, if you have any suggestions for any Halloween cases that you would like me to do, please leave that in the comments below, or you can always email me, which is in the description box. And I just really wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who comes and joins me and watches these videos and shows support. It really, really means the world to me. And you guys are amazing. And there will be a new video in a couple days. So I hope that you are all enjoying spooky season and I will see you in the next one.